भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी तुम्हारे नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी भगवान प्रचार जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत दरबार सिंह श्री गौरभक्तविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण तो सब लगे बाय On behalf of uh, TNC, Temple Management Council, we'd like to make some announcement. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Manohar Balanandas for sponsoring Niti Rajaboga for lunch today. On behalf of his late mother, Mary Harukurani Vahina, who so got the body today for the pleasure of Sisi Radha Krishna Kanaya, uh, Jagannath Bhargavi Subhadra and Sisi Nikhari Bhargavi. Uh, we pray sincerely to the Avakshi to uh, bestow the grace uh, and also uh, mercy upon the departed soul. Uh, we would also would like to express our gratitude to our Sunday Tea sponsor, uh, Hari Priya Sharma and Roshini Sharma, uh, daughters of Pakta Vajana Prabhu from Singapore, all the way from Singapore. And at this time, we also uh, humbly welcome uh, Maharaj Visakur from uh, various part of Malaysia and also Singapore. And uh, today's tea is prepared by his spirit, Her Grace Sucharu Kamala Mataji Nati, and we would like to thank uh, them on behalf of the Temple Community Management. And uh, Wednesday, 14 June, uh, coming Wednesday is actually Yogi and Adesi. So devotees are requested to refrain from taking rains. And uh, we have uh, His Holiness Bhakti Vikna Nasi Maharaj here today to deal with the car. Hare Krishna, Mudalam Dada, Alayati Kuruntar Tindra, Anikti Bhakta Dilekum, Alayati Kuruntar Sarvi, Manamarna Nandi Dilekum, Manakati Dilekum, Tukul Dilekum. In the night, we are going to be here today, we are going to be sponsored by the Vikrandar. Hari Priya Sharma, Roshini Sharma, our girl, Patna Vajna Prabhu, our girl, 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 our इधर बहुत ही दस पड़े वाले हैं आदित्य के लिए नमोदे इतने नशे नशे मारे सिर्फ नगर आवर के नमोदे लगा आवर के लिए नमोदे हाँ मारे चावर के लिए एक पौधा अंगूरे बहुत ही दस पड़े वाले हैं अंगूरा आवर के लिए सुना कामी इन्हें दूसरे में मारे चावर के लिए बहुत ही दस पड़े वाले हैं थैंक यू जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी Jana Bala Bajiri Bargari Gopi Jana Bala Bajiri Bargari Yashoda Nandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Thira Vanasari Yamuna Thira Vanachari Jaiha Raja Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaiha Raja Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bhagiri 
भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया So today we're reading Bhagavad Gita chapter 3 Karma Yoga verse number 1 Arjuna uvacha Jayasi chet karmanas te Mata buddhi janardana Tatkim karma Jatkim karmani gorit mam Niyojyasi hi keshava Arjuna avacha Jayasi chet karmana naste 
Mata budhi janadana Takim karmani gore mam Nidyojasi keshava Arjuna uvacha Jayasi chet karmanaste Mata budhi janadana Takim karmani gore mam Nidyojasi keshava Others can chant. Ladies, Arjuna Uvacha Arjuna said Jayasi better chet if karmana than fruit of action te by you mata is considered buddhi intelligence janardana O Krishna, tat, therefore, kim, why, karmani, in action, gore, ghastly, mum, me, niyojasi, you are engaging, keshava, O Krishna. Translation, Arjuna said, O Janardhan, O Keshava, why do you want to engage me in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence is better than fruit of work? Are we going to manage today without Tamil translation? Is anybody here? You want to give Tamil translation? 
Yes? And maybe some people need Tamil, they can sit at the side or something. Unfortunately, our usual translator, uh, Govinda Gaur Prabhu, is gone to KL for meeting. So, no, they're okay. Okay, thank you. We're sorry about that. Okay, purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, has very elaborately described the constitution of the soul in the previous chapter with a view to delivering his intimate friend Arjuna from the ocean of material grief. And the path of realization has been recommended, Bodhi Yoga or Krishna Consciousness. Sometimes Krishna Consciousness is misunderstood to be inertia and one with such a misunderstanding often withdraws to a secluded place to become fully Krishna Conscious by chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. But Without being trained in the philosophy of Krishna Consciousness, it is not advisable to chant the holy name of Krishna in a secluded place where one may acquire only cheap adoration from the innocent public. Arjuna also thought of Krishna Consciousness or Buddhi Yoga or intelligence in spiritual advancement of knowledge as something like retirement from active life and the practice of penance and austerities at a secluded place. In other words, he wanted to skillfully avoid the fighting by using Krishna consciousness as an excuse. But as a sincere student, he placed the matter before his master and questioned Krishna as to, best, as to the best course of action. In answer, Lord Krishna elaborately explained karma yoga or work in Krishna Consciousness in this third chapter. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Salakaya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Panchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavanibyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Nama Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Arjuna begins the, the third chapter begins similar to a, with a question which is asked again in the fifth chapter. Both times Arjuna is asking, what do you want me to do Krishna? Arjuna is confused whether he should be fighting or he should be giving up all activities as Prabhupada describes in the purport. Should he just be going away from the world and doing austerities and withdrawing himself and contemplating the Supreme, contemplating, rather contemplating spirit. So 
Arjuna, that, that this word is called Sankhya. Right? Arjuna said, should he, do, should he do the karma or should he do the Sankhya? The Sankhya is the knowledge, the contemplation, and it's the lack of activities. There's no real active participation. It's all internal contemplation. But karma is working. So, Lord Krishna had been describing to Arjuna the process of buddhi yoga. Right? Generally, we hear in the Bhagavad Gita there are three yogas. There's karma yoga, the yoga of work. There is jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge. And there is bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion. Now, where does this buddhi yoga come from? So, buddhi yoga is mentioned. Jai, Nidrada, Krishna, Kanaya, Kita. Buddhi yoga is mentioned by Lord Krishna. It has been mentioned in the second chapter and it will be mentioned again, particularly in the tenth chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, Am-sarva-sikrava-vomata-sarva-vomata-kima-dvava-jantinam that's in the 10th chapter, that's one of the chapter shloki verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna is describing, to those who are devoted to me, constantly devoted to me, and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So Bodhi Yoga has been mentioned in the second chapter also. Krishna has been talking to Arjuna about buddhi yoga. And buddhi yoga is a combination of work and knowledge. The buddhi yoga means working with intelligence. So Arjuna becomes confused about the position, what he is supposed to do. What does Krishna want him to do? Actually, Arjuna was already confused even before Krishna started speaking because Arjuna, when he surrendered to Krishna, he said, Karpanya dojo pahata swabhava prichami tvam dharma samudha cheta. Arjuna was saying, I am confused because of my miserly weakness. Arjuna was confused because he was in the bodily concept of life. He was identifying himself with his relatives. He didn't want to fight against the family members. People like Grandfather Bhishma and Teacher Drona as well as Duryodhan and all his brothers. Arjuna was thinking it's not good to fight against people who are our own family, because Pandavas are also Kurus, they're also from the same family as Duryodhan. So Arjuna was bewildered, should I fight or what should I do? But Arjuna was intelligent enough to bring the matter before Lord Krishna and to get help from Lord Krishna and he placed himself as a student of Lord Krishna saying, shishya steham sadimam tvam prapanam. Now I am your, your student, your shiksha. I am a soul surrendered to you. Please instruct me. So Arjuna had approached Lord Krishna to solve his confusion. But here in the third chapter, Krishna is confused. Not, Krishna is not confused. Arjuna is confused, right? Arjuna is confused. So Arjuna is asking, do you want me to fight or not to fight? Because one moment you're recommending work 
And the next moment you're talking about knowledge. You've got buddhi. Buddhi means intelligence, cultivating knowledge. So what, what does Krishna want Arjuna to do? But Arjuna is intelligent. He brings his doubt out. You know, a lot of people, we have doubts, but we don't see anything. We just keep quiet. So then, that's a problem. You may never get rid of your doubts. If you don't bring the doubts out, if you don't clear the doubts away, then it can be very troublesome for our spiritual progress. So it's important that we reveal what our doubts are. And that is the purpose of having uh, relationships with devotees. We need to have devotees who we can meet with and who we can discuss with. Rupa Goswami describes how the, between one devotee and another devotee there will be loving exchanges. And, and these exchanges are very, a very important part of our spiritual life. Rupa Goswami describes six exchanges. He says, Dadati, Prakripinati, Guyam, Akyati, Prichati, Bhante, Bojayate, Chaiva, Sadvidam, Prithilakshanam. Six kinds of loving exchanges. Offering gifts and accepting charitable gifts. That's, that's a very nice thing to do. And Srila Prabhupada used to do it. When he would come back from India, he came back from India to America, he'd bring some gifts to give to devotees. In the beginning of our movement, not, we didn't see that later on, but at least in the early in the early stages of our movement, when there were not many devotees, Prabhupada would do things like that. He'd bring a sari and say, this is for you. And he would bring a big bag, get a big bag, and like this. And in this way, devotees would feel so, oh, oh, Prabhupada gave this to me. And certainly, Prabhupada gave you something, you treasure it your whole life. So, this is loving exchange. Uh, we give, we, we accept gifts and we also offer gifts. We like to give things, dadati, giving. We like to give, for example, the holy name. Last night the devotees went to Penang to do Sankirtan and to give the holy name. So that's something which we can all give and we should give as, as regularly as possible. Go and take part in the Sankirtan, congregational chanting of the Holy Name. Uh, giving, that's of course giving to public, but we should also give to the devotees. Giving to devotees is it, an intimate exchange. So, helping other devotees to chant the holy name. If we are chanting, then it's encouraging for other devotees to also chant. Some, we need to see that example. And we become influenced by others when we see one devotee chanting the holy name. Then we will think, I should also chant. I've also not finished my rounds, I should chant now. He's chanting, I should also chant. The chanting, giving the Holy Name, we give also prasadam, of course. The Sunday program is famous for prasadam. And devotees are appreciating the very high quality of the prasadam which is being prepared in our centers around here. That it's very nice to hear that the devotees are satisfied and they're appreciating the cooking, the nice aroma of the South Indian dishes, kurma, and colombo, and these curries. 
famous curry, South Indian curry, payasam, of course, hmm? a little different from what Prabhupada prepared. You know, Prabhupada, he was more Bengali style. He would prepare uh, kachoris and samosa <laughs> and paneer sabjis, of course, was very popular. So Prabhupada, he liked also to make Bengali sweets and of, he would also make gulab jamun, these things. So this is giving, giving prasadam and accepting prasadam. Prabhupada explains, we approach people, in the beginning of our movement, we approach people for donations, just like building this temple, people donated. It was built with donations from the, the devotees, from our congregation, and usually mostly, I think nearly 90, maybe all of it, from the congregation of devotees, was it? Was there any donations from people who were not devotees? Huh? We have, we have gala dinner. We have a dinner, fundraising gala dinner. Oh, you had a gala dinner. Yeah. Fundraising. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like that. That, that is the, the Dati principle, giving and accepting. So we try to engage people in these things, get, the, get people to give, and we, we also accept. So offering gifts, accepting gifts, offering prasadam, accepting prasadam, and then also inquiring confidentially and revealing one's mind in confidence. So inquiring confidentially, if we have some doubts, then it's very good to reveal these doubts. Just like Ar Arjuna addresses Krishna as Madhusudana. Madhusudana means one who killed the demon Madhu. So doubts are like demons. And Krishna can kill the Krishna can kill the doubt, the demon of doubts. So uh, this is uh, important for us as devotees. We want to reveal any doubts which we have to try to help us to become better in Krishna consciousness, to be, to be more firmly situated in Krishna consciousness. So Arjuna was inquiring to Lord Krishna to take away his doubts. Is it better, you want me to work or do you, do you not want me to work? Of course, initially Arjuna was inclined not to work. Arjuna was thinking, Better not to fight. Arjuna was thinking it would be better to go away from the battlefield rather than to fight people who are all, especially like Bhishma and Drona, who are worthy of his worship. But Arjuna had put the matter before Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna was defeating the different arguments which Arjuna had about not fighting. Lord Krishna Lord Krishna was encouraging Arjuna that you, you should fight, you should take part in this battle. It's important for you to do your duty. As a Kshatriya, you have a duty and you have to take part. You should go out there and fight. Arjuna was thinking that he would get sinful reactions. But Lord Krishna told him, no, there is no sinful reaction if you fight as karma yoga. So Lord Krishna wants to elevate the consciousness of Arjuna from just simply doing the work for his own benefit to doing the work as part of yoga for the pleasure of the Supreme. Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to come to transcendental consciousness. Of course, Arjuna is a devotee, 
But Lord Krishna is instructing him, and by instructing Arjuna, he's instructing all of us that we also have to understand the importance of performing duty. The inclination of the mind is to be is to give up work, to give up all activities, not to be active. You know, we think it will be nice not to have to do so many things, nice just to sit down and just contemplate, just meditate. But that's not what Lord Krishna wants. And when Krishna spoke about Sankhya, it wasn't like that. Lord Krishna was explaining Sankhya, he was explaining that there is such a thing as knowledge, but that to come to that platform of knowledge, you have to first of all purify yourself. That work is the means by which we can purify ourselves. Work is encouraged. In fact, Lord Krishna said, everyone is forced to act. No one can be idle, not even for a moment. Everyone is forced to act helplessly due to the impulses of the modes of nature. So Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to work. He does want him to work, but he wants him to work not as the enjoyer of the work. Now generally when we work, we all think about the enjoyment. We want to enjoy the results of the work. But Lord Krishna wants Arjuna and all of us that when we work, we should work in a selfless manner. Not to enjoy the results ourselves, but to offer the results for the service of the Supreme. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna speaks, Karmani eva dikaraste. Now, people like very much to hear this. And the, the mean karmani eva dikaraste. You have a right to work. You should act according to your duty. Perform your your duty according to your qualification. So people think, yes, I should work. But everyone also thinks that I will enjoy the result. And that is the that is not what Krishna is saying. Krishna begins by saying, yes, you must work. But then he says, ma pali shu kadachana. You should work, but you are not entitled to enjoy the results of the work. So that's a big jolt to our own mind and intelligence. With, oh, I'm, not go I'm going to work and I'm not going to enjoy the results. Why should I work? Who's going to work if we cannot enjoy the results? But this is karma yoga. Karma yoga and buddhi yoga is also like that. Buddhi yoga means working with intelligence for the pleasure of the Supreme. So one who is intelligent, he will work in a detached manner, offering the result for the service of the Supreme. In that way, you do not suffer any reactions from the work. When we work for our own benefit, then we get karma. We are bound by the modes of nature. And this is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Yajnata karmananyatra loko yam karma bandana. Tadartam karma kuntiya mukta sangha samacharam. Lord Krishna is saying, work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, that work binds one to this material world. So we should understand that when we work for our own satisfaction, then we bind ourselves, we become bound to this material world. We have to stay in this world of birth and death, taking birth again and again. But when we work for the pleasure of the Supreme, 
then that frees one from the bondage of material existence. So in this way, Lord Krishna is encouraging Arjuna to come to the transcendental platform, to get free from the reactions of work. And then by becoming free from the reactions of work, he can transcend the material world. He can enter into the spiritual abode. And that is the goal of life. We have to understand that we're here in this world. It's a temporary world. And our bodies are also temporary. Tempora it's a temporary place of birth and death. And it's not a happy place. There's a lot of misery and suffering in this world. We may feel happy sometimes, but misery is always just round the corner. It's just waiting to come. We have to understand this world is not a real home. We actually belong in a different place, in another realm beyond this world of time and space there's another abode and that is the, the what we call the spiritual world or you may know it as vaikuntha or even goloka there are these places and there are many more people many more living entities there in the spiritual sky than what are here in this material world. You know, sometimes when you're driving on the roads here in Malaysia, you think, oh, so many cars, so many people, so much traffic jam. But actually, we're just a minority. We're just the, we're the rebellious living entities. In the spiritual sky, there are many, many more living entities and they're residing there eternally and they're enjoying eternally. They're not subjected to birth and death. We are. We are the conditioned souls. We are here in this world and we are bound by the modes of nature. They keep us in this world just like Chains keep you tied to something. So we're chained by the modes of nature, particularly by the rajas and the tamas, the passion and the ignorance, which keep us in this place. We have to understand our situation that we don't actually belong here. This is not actually a real place. Just like you may think, well, I know I don't belong here. I'm Indian. I belong in India. But you don't belong in India either. And you're not Chinese and what? We're not the body. The body is not the real self. The real self is the spirit soul. And that spirit soul belongs in the spiritual sky. It belongs in the world of the spirits, with the Supreme Spirit, who is Lord Sri Krishna. And Lord Sri Krishna resides there in all of his different forms. You have also Lord Narayan, you have also the different avatars of Lord, Lord Vishnu, you have the Lord Varaha, Matsya, Kurma. Narsimha and all of the different avatars, they're all having their abodes in the spiritual sky because they're all eternal forms. We have a temporary form. Our material body is just the temporary covering of our real self. Out of ignorance, we identify with the material body. And to remove that ignorance, to overcome that ignorance, we have to follow the process just like Arjuna. We have to surrender to Lord Krishna. We have to submit ourselves to Lord Krishna 
by calling his holy name. The chanting of the holy name is a very effective means in this Kali Yuga. Actually, in the Kali Yuga, there is no other process by which we can achieve success. And this was stated very clearly by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he quoted the, the scripture for us, uh, the, the uh, Brihad Naradya Purana says, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam Eva Kevalam, Kaloa Nasteva, Nasteva Nasteva, Gati Anyata. That in the Kali Yuga, this age, this age of Kali, there is no other way but to chant the holy name. And if the Shastra say three times, Kaloa Nasteva, 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 three times. Three times for emphasis. To make it very clear that there is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way but to chant the holy name. We have to learn, therefore, to, ch to chant this holy name. And we should chant with feeling, with love. We should chant from the heart. The heart in the heart. That's where the soul is situated. And in the heart, that is also where Lord Krishna resides, as the super soul, in the heart of every living entity. So when we chant, we should be calling like that, calling to Krishna. We want to awaken our eternal relationship with Lord Krishna. And it comes by chanting His holy name. Now chanting the holy name has to be done regularly. Just like, you know, you, you have to, cook, when you clean your teeth, you don't just clean them one time and think, oh, I, I cleaned my teeth last month. You know, you don't clean your teeth once you know, in a month. You have to clean your teeth every day, right? You clean them maybe in the morning, you clean them again at night. You have to clean regularly. So similarly, the heart, you have to clean it regularly. And the process to clean the heart is by chanting. You do this chanting and you do it regularly. You start to chant regularly. And in this way we start to awaken our consciousness of Krishna. We start to understand. I am the servant of Krishna, he is the master, I am his servant. Out of illusion only we're thinking, I am the master. And we think, this world belongs to me, it's for my enjoyment. This is our disease condition. This is the Asuric mentality. And it's also described to us in the Bhagavad Gita how the demon thinks. He thinks, Eshwaraham aham bogi, sedoham balavam suki. He's thinking, I am the controller, I am the Ishwara. Aham bogi, I am the enjoyer. And I am sedoham, I am perfect. Hmm? Are you perfect? Are you the enjoyer? Are you the controller? What can we control? We're very helpless. But out of ignorance we're thinking, Sedoham Balavam Suki. I am strong and I am happy. This is the, mater the materialistic, demoniac mentality. We're thinking like this. We're thinking in terms of the material body. So this ignorance can be removed as soon as you begin to chant. When you start to chant the holy names of Krishna, immediately you awaken the spiritual energy and you can understand, we immediately get realization that I am not the body, I'm a spiritual being and I'm eternally related to Lord Krishna as his servant. 
and Lord Krishna is so kind that he has come to us in the form of his holy name. So we should take shelter of his holy name by regularly chanting. And we will, you can see how it works, how very quickly the whole world changes and you can perceive the transcendental nature of this world. If we think of it in terms of enjoying independently of Krishna, then it will be a very bleak, miserable place. But if we see everything in relation to Krishna and Krishna's service, then it becomes very pleasing and enjoyable. So this is how we have to change the consciousness. The consciousness, changing consciousness. We don't want to destroy the consciousness, but we do want to purify the consciousness. And that purification comes about by chanting and by hearing and by doing service, engaging in some service for Krishna. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement is so fortunate. We have this wonderful center here in Sipranjaya. We have such a big center here. Certainly it's the biggest center in Malaysia and one of the biggest in this part of outside of India. This is one of the biggest, the biggest center anywhere in Asia. So we're very fortunate. How fortunate all of you are that you can come to this wonderful center. And there's a lot of activities, a lot of opportunity for people to do service. Seva, we say seva, not, ser not exactly service, but seva means voluntary service, performed with love for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. And the, the effect of that service, purification. We clean the heart. And our hearts do need to be cleaned. When we clean the heart, then we can feel, you feel so nice, you feel so fresh, you don't feel any more anxiety, no more stress. You get rid of all the dirty things from the heart. And it can all be done just simply by engaging in some activities for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. And that is what Krishna wants. You can see here Bhagavad Gita that Lord Krishna is not going to tell Arjuna Oh, just sit down, Arjuna, I will do everything. No, Lord Krishna is engaging Arjuna. He wants Arjuna to do it. In the same way, Krishna wants all of us to engage, to take up activity, do some service for Krishna. If you don't do it, somebody else will come, they will do it. You do some service, you get the credit. Somebody else does the service, they get the credit. You don't want credit, that's okay. But Krishna knows what you're doing and what you're not doing. Krishna knows who is holding back, who is surrendering, who is actually trying to do something for Krishna. Krishna recognizes that devotee and he helps them, takes them back home to his own abode. That is guaranteed. Krishna is very kind to his devotees. He's equal to everyone, but still he has a special feeling for his devotees. Prabhupada gives example. He says, just like women, they like children, but they have a special feeling for their own child. It is natural. In the same way, Krishna is equal to everyone. He gives everyone the chance to serve Him and to be His devotee. But Krishna takes a special interest for someone who has surrendered to Krishna, 
and taken up service to Krishna without any motivation. That is especially appreciated by Krishna. So gradually we can understand these things. It takes some time. We just have to hear, try to hear regularly, come to temple, come and chant, come and hear about Krishna and everything will become clear. Are there any questions? Yes, Mataji? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, for a person reading the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Arjuna's role or duty is very clearly uh, found there that Krishna wants him to fight in the war. That was his duty and finally he, he, he takes up to fight. You know, initially he didn't want to fight. So what people are asking is, in this present day age, how do they know what is the duty? Uh, Arjuna fought for Krishna, so what about how many people want to be supposed to do? Especially now the Ragnar is not here in this, in this age. Yes. Yeah. 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 How do we know what is our duty in relation to Krishna? Well, that's why you should, just like Arjuna, how did Arjuna know what he should be doing? He approached Lord Krishna. So in the same way, we have to approach a representative of Krishna, someone who represents Krishna, who knows Krishna's teachings, and he can understand Krishna's desire. So that person who is a representative of Krishna, he can properly guide us and instruct us what is our duty. So everyone, we need to have that kind of guidance, that we need a spiritual teacher, we need some kind of mentor, someone who can guide us. As I said, somebody, somebody you can approach to, who you can share with, who you can ask questions and they can guide you, take away your doubts. So like that. Okay, Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Kanaya Ki Jai. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Krishna. So thank you, His Holiness, Sarati, and Asim Basim Maharaj for this wonderful uh, spiritual discourse. So we will now have the puja, and uh, before that, Maharaj uh, will. He, he, as you all know, the Maharaj is actually traveling preacher, so uh, Maharaj will give away the lesson fees. And if possible, please uh, uh, submit the donation to Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Idwari. Idwari, I am the Sarana Maharaj. I am the Abhul Gita, the Sarana Maharaj. I am the Dawah Tere, the Dhyay Nasa Nasa Maharaj. I am the 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 Maharaj. Maharaj is a preacher, another seminar, and the Emperor Maharaj is a preacher. Another announcement is that on the 14th, as I mentioned earlier, 14th is actually Ekadisi, Yogi Ekadisi, so we request all the devotees to pass from the Yogi Sanada. Hare Krishna, so thank you for being here for today's Sunday feast, and we request all of you to take your shot right after the hour. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. You can have kirtan. You can have kirtan. Yeah. I think the crowd is more. I think the street is not enough. Here, some more. Come home, Vishnu Padaya. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Hare Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. 
Krishna Pestaya Bhutale Shremate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Hare Krishna. I've been enjoying all your classes. I know, yeah. It's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. Now, it's taking a while, eh? Huh? It takes a while. Yeah, two months, two months. I fell down in my house. I know, I was there in my house. I'm still doing the online class and I started doing. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Jagadashi Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinta Sri Krishna Chaitanya Shri-advaita-gada-gada-sivasati <laughs> Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Dada Dada Siva Hare Krishna Gaur Bhakta Vinda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Have a safe delivery Hope you have a safe delivery Hare Krishna huh? Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Bo Hare Bo Yes, yes Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Rama How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. You thought you couldn't wake up. Oh. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. From February. May I was very happy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Getting better. Yeah, yeah. Well. 
They look okay now. Better. Take it out. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Oh, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे
विष्णुपाद परमहंसा परिव्रज आचार्य अष्टर सत्य श्री श्रीमद इस्तेमाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति विधान स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की इसकोन फाउंडर आचार्य श्रील प्रभुपाद की नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णुपाद श्रील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर श्रील प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नम आचार्य श्रील हरिदस ठाकुर की प्रेम श्री गौ श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वास गौर भक्त बिंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीन श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की वृंदावन मायापुर धाम की गंग माये यमन माये की तुलसी महारानी भक्ति देवी की निताय गौरंग राय की राधा कृष्ण कनाया की जगन्नाथ बालदेव सुभद्र की ओ ग्लोरी सत्संभु दिवोदी सो ग्लोरी सत्संभु दिवोदी सो ग्लोरी सत्संभु दिवोदी ओ ग्लोरी टू श्री गुरु श्री गौरंगा ओ ग्लोरी श्री ल प्रभु का नमस्ते नरतमाया
भगवान की गोवर्ध महाराज की